our task tonight in learning how to use the HP 50G to solve a system of linear equations with complex numbers for coefficients using the equation writer begins with a little story. We need to solve this circuit here. In that circuit we observe there is a control to the source, this one 2i, so immediately we realize we need to write a CTL equation for the corresponding controlling variable i, this one over here. If we choose this as the reference and identify nodes 1 and 2, we notice we need two other equations, one KCL, one for node 1 over here, and one KCL for node 2. The directions for the branch currents have chosen already arbitrarily as usual, except, except for the controlling current i and for the current sources. So these are the three equations, CTL, 1, KCL1 and KCL2. Please review them quickly. I is V1 divided by 0, comma negative 2. KCL1 currents going in, X minus V1 over 2. And that is equal to currents leaving, that is Y at the top. V1 minus V2 over 0, 1 plus I. Those are the currents leaving that node. And KCL for node 2 are all the currents arriving there, which are all of these three, which I can copy and paste over here. Yeah, one, two, three, plus another I, two I. That is equal to the current leaving the node, V2 over four. We have three equations, and we have three unknowns, V1, V2, and I, and solve them. Sure, we can solve it in many different ways, but the purpose of this video is to show you how to solve that system of linear equations with complex number coefficients in the HP 50G. The first thing I've done, you realize, is to represent any complex number like X or Y whose representation comes naturally in polar form by a letter, X and Y. That simplify my equations. When I solve for V1, V2 and I using the HP 50G, their answers, their solutions, their values will come as functions of X and Y. So we'll have the calculator to do the substitution later, very quickly, very efficiently, very easily. Let's see how this is done. So we enter the equations, we go to the equation writer, and write the first of the equations, the CTL1. That controls V1 divided by 0, comma negative 2. And we go with the rest of the equations. One thing, probably the only one worth mentioning, because you have seen me enter equations in the equation writer many times before, live and in videos, is that uh, in the equation writer, when you enter a complex number, as soon as you time the comma that separates the real part from the imaginary part, the calculator will time the parentheses around it. That is all. Use the copy and paste as often as possible between equations to reduce the necessary typing as I'm doing here. And soon enough we are ready to solve this system of three equations with three unknowns, V1, V2, and I as a function of X and Y. There you go, three equations and three unknowns. And the three unknowns I want to solve for are V1, V2, and uh, I. Three equations, three unknowns. But we don't go there before going to the mode CAS and make sure all those radio buttons are cleared. And also that the calculator is in degrees and in rectangular form. Now we go to the symbolic solver, linear solutions, and there are V1, V2, and I as functions of X and Y. Get them out of the array and create the variables x and y with the necessary values so the calculator can substitute x and y into the expressions for v1, v2, and uh, i. Here you go. x is going to be 20 with 30 degrees. Enter in rectangular mode, apostrophe x store, x has been created. Now for y, same thing. It's 5 with an angle of 75 degrees, apostrophe, OY, and store. Both variables are there. See, variables X and Y. We only have to push 
the evaluation key eval and their substitution happens now for v2 and last but not least for v1 evaluation now we put the calculator in polar mode and we can read the values for i for v1 and v2 which are exactly the ones we need to report 7.55 amps with 159 degrees etc last part now that we have solved for the values of the current i 7.6 amps with 160 degrees v1 is 15 volts with 69 degrees and v2 is 4.9 volts with 151 degrees we can answer the rest of the questions in the in the exercise and those were well the first one find what is i we've already done that but also find what is the power in this capacitor here and for that because we have the voltage v1 in the capacitor and the current through it so we can just multiply v1 times the conjugate of i and obtain the power in that capacitor no surprise the real part of that is zero it's only reactive power the reactive power is negative 114 vars indeed as expected that is the um, absorbed reactive power of the capacitor what about p p is zero what other was the question well find also what is the power in this controlled source over here well for that we have the voltage across that source which is v2 this one v2 multiplying by the current to i that we know and we say that power is v2 multiplied by the conjugate of 2i and that happens to be 72 negative j11 volt ampere the real part 72 watts the reactive part negative 11 vars and that is the power delivered by this source and if you're asking yourself say, how does he know his computing delivered in one case and absorbed in the other look at the direction for the currents through the elements in this case uh, we are saying well the current is flowing from the top to the bottom from high to low so whatever power compute will be absorbed power in this case the current is going from low voltage to high conventional voltage in IC of course and whatever, whatever power I compute is going to be delivered power so that source delivers 72 watts and negative 10.8 bars of active and reactive power correspondingly and that was the answer to that question. Thank you very much.